Well now, if there is one game out there that got me interested in miniatures, it must be Hero Quest. I have so many fond memories with that game. My uh, very own neighbor has a set of Hero Quest, the classic set, and uh, he asked me to do a commission for him. I told him that uh, I love Hero Quest, so I'll do it for free. He could uh, freely select a uh, Hero Quest miniature, and he went for the evil Chaos Warrior. I uh, did consider doing it in either a metal color or maybe a deep black armor. But then I found this picture online, and my choice was made. Red it shall be. Now this miniature is quite old, it's a little dirty and has plenty of mold lines. I need to take care of that before I do anything else. So I'll uh, remove the mold lines and then I'll uh, give it a wash. And then uh, it got this uh, little hole in the back. I don't know what that's about, but uh, I'll try to fill it up with some plastic putty. And when the model is completely dry, I'll undercoat it using grey sear. And I'm trying something new uh, in this video. I'm trying this uh, rust effect by, made by Dirty Down. Um, I've never tried this before, so uh, if this video never gets uploaded, you know why. <laughs> Wish me luck. My neighbor also requested some uh, blood effects, so I'm going to do that as well. Well, enough said. Let's paint. The model has been undercoated in grey sear, and I uh, went ahead and applied some uh, grey sear from the pot as well to the places where the spray didn't really uh, hit the model. So the first step is to add a contrast paint, and I'm adding a flesh terrace red. The grey sear undercoat is actually designed for contrast paints, which is why I've uh, chosen to use that. And I'm applying this all over the armor. Just be neat and take your time. And uh, let it dry fully before we head on to the next step. I'm not touching the eggs and the chainmail, but all of the armor is, uh, is uh, having a coat of this terrace red. Okay, the flesh terrace red has been applied, and uh, well, he is now red. However, I would like to shade him, so I'm using a uh, non-oil. I would just like to mention that uh, I'm using the old formula, so this is quite strong, so I'm thinning it down with some uh, Lamian medium in a one-to-one -one ratio. If you're using the newer version of non-oil, I recommend that you still thin it down with some Lamian medium. You can always add uh, more layers if you feel that uh, the color isn't strong enough. Anyways, I'll make a mix on my palette. And then I'm adding a shade all over the armor. Make sure it uh, settles into recesses and give it plenty of time to dry. Around 20 minutes should be sufficient. Okay, the shade is dry and uh, it has really darkened the recesses and uh, the model all over. But uh, before I continue, I must admit that I just discovered something strange. I was convinced that uh, he was wearing leather uh, gloves, but uh, it seems like this one is a leather glove, but this one is armor. So I'll paint that one up like uh, I did the rest uh, so far, so I'll be right back. Now the model has been painted and shaded, so I'm going back to Flesh Terrace Red and um, I have mixed it with some contrast medium at a 1 to 1 ratio. And now I'm adding it all over again, but this time as a layer, so I am uh, avoiding all the recesses. So uh, like this for example. It will brighten it up a bit again. 
and leave the recesses dark. Just take your time and do this all over the model. The paint is dry and I ended up giving it a single layer. You can always add more layers if you want to brighten it up even further, but uh, I like this dark look. Next I've added some uh, Toshkov fur to my palette and mixed it roughly 50-50 with uh, water. And this is for highlights and there are plenty of highlights to do, all the raised areas. So, once again, take your time, grab a small brush and highlight the model. Nice and easy. Like so. And now the model has been highlighted. It took me a while, but uh, I think it looks pretty good. So uh, now I'm moving on to the leather, and by that I mean his uh, boots, his one glove, and uh, there are some leather straps behind his knees. Now I'm going to make it a bit more involved, uh, make it look old and worn, but if you want it uh, quick and easy, I, I recommend that you start with the base coat of Rylax Hide, followed by a uh, wash of Agrath's Earth Earthshade, brighten it back up with the uh, Rhinox Hide, and then add a highlight of Scrag Brown. But I'm going to do more than that, and I hope you will follow along. But to begin with, I am still adding a base coat of Rhinox Hide. Just add a thin coat all over the leather. Apply several coats if you feel you need to. Yeah, I will definitely need to do that. But as always, several thin coats are much better than one thick one. We don't want to plug out any details. Okay, that was uh, the easy part. Next I'm taking some Scrag Brown and adding an edge highlight. I am not using a shade of any kind. Um, I am edge highlighting uh, well the edges and anywhere where the leather would be naturally worn. So, uh, well, yeah, everywhere it bends really. And folds. Like this. And on the edges. might be easier for you to uh, use the side of your brush instead of the tip when you are edge highlighting. Like so. And I finished edge highlighting the leather. Now uh, those lines look a bit too clean for my taste so I'm going to make it more, look more uh, rugged. So I'm taking some scrap brown once again and then I'm adding some uh, kind of stabbing motions uh, along the edges I've just painted to make some uh, imperfections in the leather um, make it look more uh, worn and in uh, random patterns and yeah you know what I mean just stab gently along those edges you've just painted So it doesn't look so uh, clean cut, or what do you say? You don't have to be gentle, but uh, do be careful that you're not hitting the armor. I hope you can tell that it made a difference. I think it looks pretty good, but uh, we're not finished. I'm still using Scrag Brown and I'm using an even smaller brush this time. And now I'm, I'm painting some uh, very thin lines. For example on the glove here. I'm starting at the center and, and painting out towards the edges. To make some, uh, some more uh, imperfections. It's 
No need to be gentle or neat about it. It, it, it must look random to, to have uh, the best effect. And with that we have some uh, pretty nice texture. But I'm going a step further. I'm taking some Yushapti bone and making a stabbing motion once again. This time a bit more gentle and only on the... Um, uh, extreme edges where the wear and tear would be worst. So like this. So we look more uh, extreme. But only on the edges. Well, anyway, you think the the leather would be most worn, depending on what you're painting. You can use this method for any kind of leather on any model. And with that, I'm grabbing my uh, smaller brush once again, my insane detail brush, and I'm still using your shapti bone. Um, this time, I'm not stabbing it on. I am painting along some of the some of the lines uh, we've made earlier to make it look even older and uh, maybe some uh, uh, deeper cracks. Let me see, like so. Paint it uh, where the lines intersect, for example. Now we really have some textured battle-worn leather, but uh, the contrast is a bit strong in my opinion. So I'm going back to Rhinox Hide and I've added one drop of Rhinox Hide and eight drop of Lamian Medium to create a glaze. And I'm adding this all over uh, to make it uh, blend more together. Like so. To bring the colors together, I mean. You can use less Lamian medium or you can use more Lamian medium than I did, but um, yeah, you can test the con consistency out on your palette. It has to be uh, transparent before you add it to your model. Just like so. And with that the contrast is uh, less extreme. Next I've added a drop of Abaddon Black to my previous mix and I'm painting this uh, where the shadows would normally be. So that could be beneath here. Uh, actually anywhere where you want the leather to look a bit darker. But uh, I think natural shadows such as here. And between his fingers. Anywhere you want shadow, really. It might seem subtle, but uh, the effect will be noticeable when you are finished. And with that we have some worn leather. The next step is much easier, I promise. It's the metal. And I'm starting by using a base coat of Iron Hand Steel. And I'm blocking in everything metal. That, that's the axe, the bottom of the shaft, his uh, chainmail on his front and on his back. And I believe that's about it. Yeah. So, here we go. Nice and easy. 
And as always, better to use uh, thin down uh, coats rather than thick ones. You can always apply more thin coats. It's uh, much more difficult to remove paint. Just like so. And the paint is dry. Yay! <laughs> um, next up I'm adding a shade of non oil. All over the metal. We don't want it to look so clean, do we? And give it plenty of time to dry. I've given the shade plenty of time to dry. So now I'm adding a highlight of Stormhost Silver, and I'm doing this in uh, three different stages, because first I'm highlighting the chainmail on his front and his back, and I'm using a dry brush for this. Just be gentle, careful, and just highlight with a dry brush. Give it that sweet, sweet shine. Like so. And for stage 2 I've added some Stormhose Silver to my palette and thinned it out with water. And I am um, highlighting the, the axe. It's highlighting the axe. Usually when I paint metal, I uh, take the base color and apply it once more to brighten it back up, but we are going to add rust and blood, so it's not necessary this time. But yeah, highlight it with Stormhost Silver. Just take your time and go around the edges with this color. It will be worth your time. Of course, I also highlighted the bottom of the shaft. Um, third stage, I, uh, there are lots of uh, bolts or nits or what, what do you call them, or around the armor. And I'm uh, applying some Stormhold Silver to that as well. <coughs> Just be careful and dot it on the bolts. Like so. There are plenty of them around, so just take your time and, uh, yeah, paint those up. Next up is the wood, and, uh, well, that's pretty much just half of the egg shaft. And I'm using some uh, contrast, wild wood. Adding it to my palette, I'm not thin thinning it down, but I'm adding it so I can better uh, adjust how much I have on my brush. Just be careful not to hit the armor. You might need a several coats of this. As your just discretion. The contrast paint is dry, and uh, if you wish, you can leave it at that. But I am adding a very careful dry brush of Gawthor Brown, just to give it a, a small highlight. But as I said, be careful, because there's not much room to work with. Next I'll paint the axe wrappings uh, at the bottom of the shaft. And I'm starting with a base coat of Morgas Bone. I thinned it down quite heavily, so I might need a second layer of this, but uh, yeah. You will judge for yourself when you paint this. 
as long as you get a good coverage and uh, preferably use several uh, thin coats, then you're good to go. The paint is now dry and it looks way too clean for my taste, so I'm adding a shade of Agrath Earthshade. And as always, when you're using a shade, leave it uh, plenty of time to dry. You can be as liberal as you want with this. The more Agrath Earthshade you use, the darker the result will be. Like so. When the shade is completely dry, it's time to add a highlight. And I'm using a Yushapji Bone and I'm applying it as a dry brush. So get some on your brush, wipe off most of it on your tissue, and apply it very gently. Be careful not to hit the, the parts you've already painted. Just like so. Okay, next up is the bone color, and uh, by that I mean the skull on the base and his uh, horns on his helmet. I'm using Sandrid Dust uh, as a base coat. Just apply it all over, but be gentle. You might need uh, two layers of this. I've also uh, base coated the little skull emblem he has on his uh, his chest. So the next step is to add a shade, and I'm using Seraphim Sepia. Just add this all over. The shade is now dry, so the final step is to add a dry brush, and I'm using Terminator Stone. Just a light dry brush. To give it those highlights we want. Well, excuse me for savoring this moment. The miniature is uh, technically complete, except for the base. But uh, now it's time to add some special effects, and I'm using a rust effect that I've never used before, so yeah. I'm probably going to ruin this model now. <laughs> but I am uh, using um, four different uh, products here. I'm using Semesi Desert, Agras Earthshade, Stormhole Silver, and uh, Dirty Down Rust. I'm starting with the uh, Samesi Desert, and I'm, um, I considered uh, painting over the metal axe uh, with this color, but instead I'm adding a heavy dry brush. So, and by heavy I mean heavy. Goodbye, shiny axe. Careful not to hit the red armor and the, the wood. I want this uh, mustard color on the axe, on most of it, at least. Like so. And following that, I'm adding a shade of Agrath's Earth Shade to tone it down just a little bit. Oh, 
what have I done? And give it plenty of time to dry. The shade is dry. So uh, now I'm going back to some messy desert and adding a light dry brush just, just to add some uh, streaks of this color to make some uh, tone variation. Just down the center for example. Just a little bit here and there. It's subtle but I do believe it will give a, a good effect. Like so. And following that I'm adding an edge highlight or dry brush of uh, Stormhose Silver. Just to make it look sharp in some, well, sharp places. You don't have to go all over, but uh, here and there is fine. Like so. Just give the illusion of uh, metal underneath the rust. Yeah, I'm satisfied. And now it's time to ruin our model. I have never used this before, as I've mentioned earlier in the video, so uh, it will be interesting to see. But uh, if I understand this right, I need to apply it either in a thin or a thick layer, depending on, on uh, the effect I'm going for, and then let it dry completely. Then I can reactivate it with, with some water and uh, make some um, uh, streaks, for example, with the brush. And uh, I am using an old brush for this. I won't ruin my uh, new brushes. So, let's do this. And of course, I have shaken this uh, bottle very, very well. This is not uh, the finest brush you've ever seen, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. So far, I like the color. It seems to be drying rather fast, but I'll give it 15 minutes just to be safe. Like so. The rust effect is now completely dry and I must admit I really like the look of it. Um, I am hesitant to add some water to it, but uh, I need to demonstrate how it works, so I'm going to do that anyway. I do like how it looks in the front, so I'm adding a little water to the back just to uh, uh, reactivate, reactivate it. So I'm uh, grabbing a damp brush, then I'm moving it in downward motions. Not much is happening, oh wait, something is happening. Yeah, I'm making some streaks now. Try with a little more water. Yeah, I'm effectively removing the rust effect now. So I think I'll stop right here. I kind of like it. I hope you do as well. It's an easy to use product. Oh, uh, and I would recommend once you are finished with your model, um, Keep it away from water, because it will reactivate. Personally, I would like to stop painting the model here, because I really like how it looks. But uh, my client, he wanted some blood on the axe. So I'm taking some blood for the blood guard from Citadel. And uh, I'm using a small dry brush and adding it at the center of the axe, so it looked like he chopped some limb off or something. And if you are using a heavy dry brush, you might get some blood splatter on the miniature, which could be cool depending on what you like. But I'll be gentle. And I hope I won't uh, reactivate the rust underneath. But less is more. Like so. Yeah, 
And when you're done, you only need to paint the base. And I am um, painting a dark gravel and ash base. And there is a video on my channel that uh, shows you how to do that. This Chaos Warrior is ready to become a menace in Hero Quest. I hope you like this tutorial, and uh, if you do, please leave a like and a comment. I would highly appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching, and happy painting!